small, uh, but they all have a lot of personality. Richmond tours are happening Tuesday through Friday. You can learn more at VAGardenWeek.org. And later this morning, we will be giving away a pair of tickets to a tour for this Wednesday. Stay tuned for your chance to win. Mother Nature's wrath on full display across the Midwest and South captured in heart-stopping images. Just ahead, Time Labs video showing the rapid change in weather as tornado warnings storms rolled across the country. Mike. And Greg, our sky is going to change a little bit. We're clearing out this morning. We have a beautiful sky to greet you, but we're going to see a few clouds later today and maybe a couple pop up storms of our own. We'll talk about that in your hour by hour forecast next. All right, Mike, thanks so much. We go to the Midwest right now, looking down over the Windy City, known for Magnificent Mile in Lake Michigan. You got some cloud cover right there. Uh, Mike's forecast and your chance at winning some squirrels tickets. A couple of hours. Stay tuned. And welcome back at 611. A severe storm system swept across the south and Midwest on Saturday, bringing warnings of tornadoes across Missouri, Louisiana, and Arkansas, and at least one reported possible tornado in Illinois. Look at this video. This is incredible. Time lapse video taken in St. Louis captures the significant change in weather. All in just a few minutes, with the storms rolled through, worsening as tornado sirens rang across the city. Something you do not want to hear, Michael. No, we actually had a few little severe reports north of our viewing area yesterday, and then here's the swath of severe weather from yesterday and those possible tornadoes kind of right near the Illinois-Missouri border. A little piece of that system, what's left of it, is going to come through here late today. It's going to be a much more benign form. We may see a couple thunderstorms later today into this evening, but check it. Not that shot this is incredible the waning crescent moon, yeah. baby. We're heading towards a new moon on Tuesday, despite the Duran Duran song. I believe it's, I believe it's Tuesday this week. <laughs> uh, so that and we had the Leary meteor showers this week and whatnot. I just have a question. What's that? Are you hungry like the wolf? Oh, I am <laughs> uh, right now. We have a clear sky and sunrise is just about 21 minutes away. It's gonna be a nice looking morning. We'll see a little increase in clouds during the day today. It's currently 57 out the airport right now. Winds are out of the south southwest at five miles an hour. We continue having some pretty delicious dew points. You know, a few days ago it was pretty humid with those highs in the upper 80s and the air has been actually fairly comfortable and dew points will stay in the 50s for a good chunk of today. We have high values of tree pollen and grass pollen as well. And even though we had some rain the past couple of days in some areas that washed the air out a little bit, but yesterday not a lot of rain in Richmond in and of itself. So uh, the pollen continues to rage on. I have a few spots near 60 right now, but a lot of us are down into the low to mid to upper 50s. We continue with that southwesterly wind, so it's still going to be another warm day today with high temperatures getting into the low and mid 80s. But here's the cold front near Chicago. This is what caused the severe weather yesterday. And notice behind it, it is significantly cooler with temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Not going to get as cold as the low 30s here, but we will see a definite downturn in temps from Monday, Tuesday into Tuesday night. This part of the front brings the chance of a few thunderstorms here later this evening, like after about 9 o'clock. Ahead of it, there will be a few little isolated showers and storms. These that are out here towards the west, a lot of these are going to fade away, but some of this cloud cover will continue tracking eastward. So we'll have some sunshine with increasing clouds today. Day. We're starting off with a clear sky during the day. Clouds will increase. We'll have high temperatures this afternoon, getting into the low and mid 80s, even a few spots upper 80s. Maybe a pop of shower or thunderstorm by mid to late afternoon. A better chance those are going towards the evening hours. In fact, after about eight, nine o'clock, that's when our chance of rain really goes up. But a lot of these showers and thunderstorms will start to fall apart as they get towards central Virginia. So we're not looking at a high chance of storms here near I-95 and points east, where the better chance of storms will be in western Virginia today. For this morning. We're talking about some 50s to around 60. Tomorrow morning, we'll have some 40s and 50s across the area. And then for the day tomorrow, getting into the upper 60s and low 70s. Uh, those storms that come in later today, mostly the ones this evening, could have a few stronger wind gusts. So we'll keep an eye on that. But the risk of severe weather is actually pretty low. For today, 85, then 73 tomorrow, a bit breezy. And even some gusty winds on Tuesday. Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, some 40s with some 30s north and west. But then just as we cool down, we warm back up to the mid 80s later this week. Maybe a Charlie Friday, a better chance next Saturday. Great. All right, Michael, thank you so much. It is 614. No need to get up and walk to a trash can in the Big Apple. Now they come to you. Why these robotic trash cans have been unleashed upon New York City and what we're learning from the cans themselves. Plus, mm, don't look down. Taking to the sky for some high flying stunts. The story behind this floating skate park. 
Are you ready? Are you excited? I'm ready. Both of us went and got haircuts yesterday. I went in and I said, my friend will have something of equal or lesser value. And here we go. Let me tell you. Yeah. I don't know. We have the same barber, Miss Leanne. So, Miss yeah. Leanne, thank you. I, who's dead? We'll have to have a poll. Who's, who's dead? Who, who's looks, looks more real? <laughs> That's the poll. She does so good with the glue. <laughs> yes. Setting it on. All right, listen, I, we, we digress. Right. From the high flying extremes to adorable baby animals, we have everything you want because it's part one of Hey, Watch This. There are skate parks, and then there's this. British BMXer Chris Kyle took his skills to the sky in a death defying feat, riding in the world's first floating skate park. The project took nearly three years, but the final product was a carbon fiber BMX bowl. Suspended 2,000 feet in the air by one of the world's largest operating hot air balloons. Mm. Uh, after practicing on land, Kyle took his skills to the skate park in the sky over <laughs> England, wearing a heavy parachute, fighting against a bouncing rocking balloon, and cheered on by his friends in the basket. At least there's one loose balloon. Oh, my word. Well, the beverage company that sponsors that if yeah. you saw it on the side yeah, of the balloon cool. it says gives you wings you're going to need it especially at that skate park i gotta go skate park <laughs> i gotta go i gotta go <laughs> in a place like new york city it's not really hard to feel like uh, you may be being watched but what could be watching you may surprise you check this out researchers from cornell university they're unleashing two robotic trash cans equipped with 360 degree cameras on the city to study how people interact with autonomous everyday objects in public Captured footage shows people being welcoming towards the robots, a woman helping one when one gets stuck, and a man rewarding the trash can for moving towards him with a good boy, as well as reacting negatively. One person just calls the robots just creepy. They want to throw their trash away themselves. Researchers say, in general, the robots encourage social interaction among strangers and that people felt pressured to uh, generate garbage for the robots and, and feed them. Now, if we could get the robots to actually pick up the trash <laughs> yeah. in the roads, that would be great. Yeah, that woman seemed to like it, but there's a witness on scene, Navin Johnson. He said another guy hates those cans. He hates those cans. If you get that, please email us and let us know. <laughs> that is a this glass and this lamp. That's all I need. That's old school, man. In Pennsylvania, the <laughs> South Park Game Preserve has welcomed a new member to its family. This is oh. a baby bison, and it's the newest addition to the herd. It was born at the beginning of April. The new arrival is celebrated by the parks, encouraging people to visit the reserve and take photos of the calf. The footage shows the not-yet-named bison calf suckling wow. from its mom and being cleaned by members of the herd. And according to local news reports, the bison have roamed the South Park Game Preserve since the 1920s. Incredible. I was looking at the National Park website about bisons. They can live like 25 years in captivity, and, and really, they say, bisons do not make good pets. <laughs> <laughs> and Duly enough, noted. <laughs> oddly enough, they have robotic trash cans there, too. <laughs> Time now for Pause for Pets. Here's Goldie. <laughs> good morning. Meet Bosher, a one-year-old gray kitty adoptable from Richardson's Rescue. He came into the rescue as a kitten, but is still trying to find his forever home. He's the sweetest and most playful boy and absolutely loves to cuddle in your lap. Bosher loves other cats and would love to go to a family with another cat. He would prefer not to be picked up and carried around as it makes him a little nervous, but sit on a couch or chair with a blanket and you have a Velcro kitty. If you're interested in adopting Bosher, please send an email to richardsonsrescue at gmail.com. I'm Mike Goldberg with this morning's Paws for Pets. Thanks, Goldie. It's 622. Have a lovely shot of the moon outside this morning. We're starting off clear with temperatures in the 50s across the region. Today, we're heading back up into the 80s, low and mid 80s today. A little increase in clouds, maybe a pop-up shower, thunderstorm this afternoon, a better chance this evening. 55 tonight, then cooler the next couple days with highs in the upper 60s and low 70s, overnight lows in the 40s, even some 30s Wednesday morning north and west. We have a good dry couple days Monday through Thursday. We get a shower here late Friday, a better chance of a few showers and storms first half of next weekend, but we're back into the warm weather Thursday and Friday. Greg. Nice little uh, stretch here of uh, warm weather, Mike. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. Well, speaking of warm weather, it's baseball season. And Mike and myself, we've got uh, four tickets to a future game, so you do want to stay tuned here on CBS 6 Sunday morning. Stay tuned. The Loyalty Automotive CBS 6 Sports Desk. 
The feel good edition of CBS 6 Sports begins with college football. Several state programs chose Saturday as the day to finish up their spring practice sessions with one final one in front of the fans to show what they might be this upcoming fall. Mike Hollins led UVA back into Scott Stadium for the first time since November's tragic shooting. The names of Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry painted in the end zone. First drive from Monmouth transfer Tony Musket. He throws a bomb to J.R. Wilson as he shook off one tackle and goes 68 yards for the touchdown. And then play some snow angels in the end zone as the white team actually led seven to three. But later in the half, the blue team would respond by Hollins, who punched it in from a yard out five months after surviving the tragic shooting, laying the ball on the name of his friend, Deshaun Perry, in the end zone. It would be the day of the white team as they pick up a 34-19. Across town at Hovey Stadium, Virginia Union completed their 15th and final practice of the spring. Head coach Dr. Alvin Parker enters his fifth season at his alma mater with several starters from last year team that hosted a playoff game in Division two for the first time in 32 years. Running back Jada Byers is one of those returning starters. Last year he was named CIAA Offensive Player of the Year and won the Lanier Award. Coach Parker, please about how the team performed this spring. It's been excellent, man. You know, I think, you know, coming off of last season, the type of season that we had, you know, everybody anticipating something bigger and better this year. So right now, that's kind of what we're preparing for, you know. So the vibe has been extremely high. You know, um, practice has been fun every day. The guys know what to accomplish, know how to accomplish that mission we got to do this year. So we're excited. Now to college hoops, another VCU player that entered the transfer portal announced where he will play next season. Jameer Watkins announced on social media he will play at Florida State. He averaged nine and a half points and over five rebounds per game last season for the A-10 Conference champion Rams. Watkins chose Florida State over Penn State, Arkansas, among others. Former VCU guard Josh Banks also announced on social media he's committed to UNC Asheville and will play for former VCU assistant Mike Morrell. Banks appeared in 28 games this past season, averaging eight minutes and about three points per game. He appeared only once in the A-10 tournament last month and did not play in the NCAA loss to St. Mary's. Banks has two years of eligibility left. Turning now to baseball, the Flying Squirrels looking to snap their three-game losing streak at Harrisburg. Top of the third for Tyler Fitzgerald, the team's MVP from last season. He goes to the deepest part of the park for extra bases. Hayden Cantrell will score on Fitzgerald's RBI triple. 2 nothing Richmond at that point. They will tack on two more in the top of the fifth, and they end their skid with a 4-3 win over Harrisburg. And we finish up with boys lacrosse, a matchup between Atlee and Riverside, the defending state champs in Class 4 and in Class 5. For First quarter, Kevin Miller with the score as he scored the Raiders first two goals and assisted on two others. Atlee picks up the victory 14 to 10. The final that's the latest from the loyalty automotive sports desk. Shano, you're the man. Thanks so much. Soon a family of eight living in Petersburg will have a new home to call their own. It's all thanks to Habitat for Humanity. How the group is helping a family get one step closer to their dream home. Encouraging more minority men to become teachers in the classroom. We take a look at the first ever RVMN Teach conference and how it's striving to make a difference. This is CBS 6 This Morning Weekend. Showing up to support victims of crime in Central Virginia with a 5K and resource fair. Why the Richmond Interim Police Chief says it's critical to be a resource and a friend. Highlighting the important impact of minority male teachers on students in Richmond through RBA men teach why one person says teaching is one of the best ways to make a big difference in the world demolishing a blighted house to make way for the home of a family and their dreams the hard journey to their new home 631 welcome back to CBS 6 Sunday morning Greg and Mike helping start your day thanks so much for joining us Mike I cannot believe we're already the 16th day of April. We yeah. are just motoring. And I got to say, the last few days or so, last week, feeling more like June. Yeah, uh, it's going to feel another kind of like summer like day today. Yes. This could be a little bit cooler for tomorrow and Tuesday. Uh, but if you don't like the cooler weather, the warm air is coming back later this week. Well, I'm schwitzing. <laughs>
<laughs> I schwitz when it gets over 70 degrees, so essentially once you get past February, uh, I get a little bit damp. Uh, but with the way this winter was, man, it was a warm winter. But see there, that's our Sky Tracker cam looking over downtown. That little thumbnail that you see there, that is the last little sliver of the moon. It's a little jet con trail in the sky there as well. So we get up to clear sky now. We have temperatures in the 50s, but it's down to 52 in Emporia. It's 57 officially at the airport, 53 in Farmville. And as we take a look at the 24 hour temperature change, we're down at least a couple degrees. Areas like Emporia, though, down about 10 degrees versus this point yesterday. We had some showers and thunderstorms yesterday into last night. Those have moved on out. It's clear right now. We are going to see a little increase in clouds during the day today. There may be a pop up shower or thunderstorm this afternoon in a few spots. That chance goes up after about 5, 6 o'clock and even more so after about 9, 10 o'clock. So our best chance of rain is going to be late this evening, but we may get a pop up storm this afternoon and highs getting into the low and mid 80s. For tomorrow and Tuesday, it's going to be a little bit cooler. In fact, Tuesday night is going to be kind of chilly, but we have another, another warm up in our seven day forecast. We'll talk about that coming up. Greg. Michael, thank you. A crime alert this morning out of Chesterfield County, where police are investigating a shooting in the 3200 block of Meadowdale Boulevard. Police say reports of a shooting came in about 1040 Saturday night. The scene was found, but no victim. A juvenile victim was later located at the hospital with serious injuries. Police say right now they do not have any information on a possible suspect. If you do have any information, you can call Crime Solvers anonymously at this number, 804-748-0660. Virginia State Police are investigating following a deadly officer-involved shooting in Amelia County. The Amelia County Sheriff's Office was called to a home in Poor House Road about 8 Friday night to take 45-year-old William Harver Sr. in on an emergency protective order. Police say Mr. Harver then barricaded himself inside a shed at the house and fired a shot. The VSP tactical team was called out in over seven hours. They worked to try to negotiate a peaceful surrender. After 3 a.m., troopers say Harvard came out of the shed with two handguns pointed at the troopers. The troopers fired their weapons and Harvard was shot and killed. No officers or troopers were injured. The troopers involved have been placed on administrative leave during an investigation. In Harrisonburg, the Rockingham County Sheriff's Department is investigating a shooting that leaves two people dead. It happened at apartments popular with students off James Madison University's campus. Police were called to Newberry Lane about midnight for shots fired. Investigators say two young men were shot and killed during a party. The victims are 22-year-old D'Angelo Gracie from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, and a 17-year-old from Harrisonburg. Neither are students at JMU. The investigation is ongoing and police are still looking for a suspect. Police do not believe there is a threat to the public. The last week in April is National Crime Victims Rights Week and Richmond had a bit of a head start as runners gathered for the SOS Show of Support 5K. Well, the event was held to not only show support for crime victims and highlight resources that are available to lend a helping hand, but also to bring awareness to the impact crime has on neighborhoods. Acting Richmond Police Chief Rick Edwards says he spent most of his career as a homicide investigator and explains that it's important to be both a resource and a shoulder for victims. And I still have communication with, with family members of victims that I worked a dozen years ago. It's not only important because it's the right thing to do, but it's how you solve crime. And if the families don't trust that we're going to support them in their time of need, we can't do our job. Our John Burkett was there along with the Reopen the Case Foundation. Money raised through the races going to the Virginia Victim Assistance Network. You can still donate online. Male minority teachers make up less than 5% of all educators in the nation. That's why Richmond Public Schools created the RVA Men Teach program. The organization held its first annual conference Saturday, highlighting the great impact of male teachers inside Richmond Public Schools. Richard Mayer, Stoney, and Senator Lamont Bagby, they were both keynote speakers during the event. There were discussions about the impact of COVID on RPS students and teachers and the future of education. The 2019 National Teacher of the Year, Rodney Robinson, was an organizer of the conference. The best way to change the world is being educated. Tupac once said, I may not change the world, but I might spark the mind that one day will. 
And as an educator with those classrooms full of kids, you never know who might go on to discover a cure for cancer, who might be the next person to walk on the moon. And it may go, all go back to that one spark that you had in that one lesson. The conference also featured a teacher hiring fair. Right now, RPS is offering bonuses of up to $12,000. If you're interested, you can apply at rvaschools.net.